Fun round this morning. It's uh, Sunday, April 24, 2016. Decided to check out one of the local ponds I hadn't been to in a while. Brought the four weight and more grasshoppers and started looking around and exploring and noticed um, a lot of um, uh, bluegill, nice looking bluegill on their beds as well as uh, some nice looking bass that were uh, lurking in the area. Spent a good while trying to figure out the pattern. Tried uh, different uh, size uh, lures, uh, the grasshopper as well as uh, smaller size grasshoppers and other um, fishing flies that we had. But finally did it was uh, a size 10, uh, or correction, a size 12 grasshopper. Uh, that seemed to uh, trigger the bite with the uh, bluegill. Uh, and then later on we adjusted the uh, uh, larger size grasshopper uh, so that uh, we could try a size 10, I believe, is what we were using uh, later to, to hook up with some of these guys. And what that did was uh, we did get a lot of short strikes, um, but um, when we did get a good hookup, it turned out to be a pretty nice looking uh, bluegill. Got uh, several uh, much bigger than the size of your palm on your hand, easily filling up uh, uh, a skillet. So uh, we'll definitely get some of these guys posted on uh, uh, the fishing bulletin board. And here you'll just see um, one area that we're working and uh, uh, some of the action that uh, we had basically on these uh, uh, bluegill that were in the area. And like we're saying, we did see a lot of bass. I uh, just couldn't get them to strike. And when they did uh, actually take, uh, they were actually chasing the uh, a bluegill that was on our line. Uh, and a couple of times we were able to get uh, a couple to take a look and uh, even chase our bluegill and in uh, the last case and we'll get some we'll show some video of it uh, of one nice looking bass that uh, took our bluegill and that had taken a grasshopper and uh, ran with it but uh, we ended up uh, losing this one or that one uh, when it threw the uh, bluegill and uh, didn't uh, get them hooked but still uh, it's good to see that uh, there's some nice looking bluegill in this area uh, a lot of them um, beds big ones too uh, not uh, like the ones that we've been seeing in other places these these were some fairly good size um, beds that we're seeing about uh, anywhere between a foot to two foot uh, in diameter so uh, pretty cool and then uh, those bass that we were seeing uh, good size ones unfortunately uh, they really wanted live bait versus uh, any any fishing fly or lure that we were throwing at so. again we were using the four weight had lots of fun with that four weight uh, with the grasshoppers and when these guys put a tug on the line and put a bend in the rod it definitely uh, could feel it and they took yeah. also uh, what you'll see is when we're casting we're having to cast uh, yeah. fairly a fairly good distance uh, just past where the water fountain normally is and um, We'd also notice that uh, you get a, a bluegill to take, uh, you get a couple of hits uh, on uh, from a bluegill, and then things would quiet down, and then uh, we walk away, try a different spot, and then come back again in about 5-10 minutes, and they start uh, striking again. And what we noticed was um, those big bass that were kind of lurking around and chasing them and actually eating a few of them uh, is what uh, we noticed. They chase them out of the area, uh, things quiet down. Uh, come back and once uh, the fish settle down again they start hitting again kind of lost count of how many we caught and released um, but easily would say uh, over 20 uh, and of those 20 most of them were uh, bigger than the size of your your palm of your hand uh, so uh, definitely nice looking ones here uh, I'd like to just uh, start shifting over to uh, those bluegill chasing the bass or the uh, bass chasing the bluegill on our line what you'll see here in a little bit is one where we caught the bluegill, we're bringing it in, and we saw a couple of bass chase it. And we can actually see them come up fairly close to uh, shore, and we got some good video, or at least some video of it. Uh, we don't have the polarized filter on the uh, camera, uh, so we kind of made some adjustments to uh, see if we can get at least a, a, a good, good um, video, or at least some video uh, of that bass. Uh, I'm chasing it and so you can see in the sidebar as well as in the main window if you can just see a glimpse of it it's a nice looking bass here um, estimating that it uh, uh, definitely uh, over over two pounds if not uh, maybe a four or five pounder uh, and this is one 
And that was one of the smaller ones that we saw. There was a couple of other bigger ones that uh, we had one actually nip at our line uh, or at our fly, didn't hook up. And we actually had another one that uh, took the hook or took the uh, fly, was on there briefly, but uh, threw the hook on us. And then uh, this last one is um, one where we've caught the bluegill. Uh, now this bass has taken it and is now running with it. And we're just trying to uh, keep the uh, line tight in the hopes of the uh, bass uh, staying on the line long enough to where we could bring it in and at least uh, maybe hook up with it, if not uh, take a picture of it. So uh, instead, you'll see here in a moment where it's going to just throw the uh, or spit the uh, bluegill out. And uh, when we bring in the bluegill, you'll see some teeth marks, or, or you'll, well, we saw some teeth marks on it, uh, but bottom line, uh, it let go. Alright, till next time, we'll catch you all later, and good luck and good fishing.